we can put the needs of uh, all these people that uh, have put uh, requests and we know that you'll hear them lord and that you'll answer your those prayers we ask you that your hand of blessing be upon each and every one of us open our hearts to hear the word of god let it sink deeply into our hearts that we might uh, rejoice in the wonderful salvation that you've given us we thank you lord for these opportunities and the challenges that we have that we can rejoice in all the things you've given us bless the speaker today that we might be uplifted and rejoice evermore and look forward to the coming of your kingdom upon this earth soon lord jesus thank you for this time together amen 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 and again welcome to our meeting and we'd like to welcome some cyberspace travelers all the way from adelaide we have ethan welcome ethan and brad and suzette and family so thanks for joining us and i was looking at the screen and seeing all these willing volunteers for a testimony i'm thinking who would love to give their testimony and then i thought there's a man here that has the best first name ever on the face of this earth so we'll ask brad noble to bring his testimony oh has it oh yeah no i have been hello can you hear me all right yeah all right i've got probably sound like i'm coming from outer space like the opening prayer <laughs> um it's great to be with you all um yeah my my testimony um goes back a long way to my my grandparents but i'll start with um um just my bit where uh i was brought up in a family that um where uh, my parents were were spirit filled and and um i guess through them and through the um being in the fellowship i i learnt all the concepts of god that i guess are missing in the world from a, from a very young age and and just just to have that um just to have that um, hope and and faith um, is from a young age is is a real gift um, and uh, um, I guess um, I, it wasn't long before I realised that um, I needed the Holy Spirit for myself that it wasn't um, um, it it wasn't uh, you know a family situation but it was a, an individual thing that uh, the Lord calls us to. Um, and, uh, so I started asking for the Holy Spirit and, um, I was, I was provoked by a brother who, um, asked me why I wanted it once. Um, and, uh, I was stumped. I, <laughs> it's just one of those awkward situations as a 10 year old where, um, you know, an adult talks to you <laughs> and, um, he, he asked me why I wanted the Holy Spirit and I, and I just got stage fright and didn't know what to say but it actually prompted me to to um go away and really think about that and and dwell on that in my in my heart and my mind and i just remember um it was at a kids camp that i was i was lying awake in bed um actually i'd, I'd had some good fellowship with a brother just in our in in the prayer time at at, uh, at kids camp and we'd been talking about all sorts of things and i remember things that i was struggling with at school at the time it's funny looking back at that, you know, all the things that you think as a 10 year old, but um, I just remember I, after that conversation, I, I laid in bed awake, um, just thinking of all the reasons why I needed the Holy Spirit for myself and why I wanted it more than anything else in the world. And I, I went to sleep thinking those thoughts. And I remember I woke up thinking the same thoughts. And um, we got up early and went for a walk up one of the hills there at Karakalinga and, um, uh, we had some prayer and sang some choruses up the top of the hill, looking over the ocean. It's a great spot. Um, and yeah, I guess just my, my mind was on all of those things that I'd, that I'd been thinking about. And, um, I just couldn't say hallelujah anymore. I just, this, this language was um, starting to come out of my mouth. It wasn't fluent at that time, but, um, I knew, I knew that the Lord was, was, uh, filling me with the Holy spirit. And I, um, came out fluently with that language at home a week later um without much without much difference or or effort i you know i just i just remember praying in bed one night and it just and it just all came out the lord the lord knows these things and he knows our hearts but um that was that was an amazing experience i'll never forget and um he's done a lot of other things for me um 
Um, I got completely healed of asthma uh, in a in a very memorable um, situation down at camp as well, where uh, I was I was fighting for every breath, and and um, um, that that night I was um, completely healed and never got asthma again. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's lots of other things I could say. Um, it's a huge um, privilege um, to um, to be married in the Lord and and to um, find all the answers to all the challenges that come up in your life um, together as as a couple that that love and serve the Lord and 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 then to share that with your kids as as they um, come along and and get spirit filled and and um, you know le learning the same um, things and and as, as we learnt when we were growing up in the Lord and and doing that all together um, there's just uh, it's a very exciting life and um, I just can't thank the Lord enough for, for all the things that he's done for me and all the things that he continues to teach me until uh, the day he comes back. Amen. Thank you for that. And we will now, it's, my computer is very annoying. As soon as I speak, I just, my face comes up full screen. It's quite shocking. But I'll um, try and keep it on the grid view. That's much better. I'm not quite so big. We'll um, hand over now to Peter Rotter, who will bring the word of God for us. I just need you guys to unmute as well. From your end. Your end. <laughs> all right. G'day, everybody. Hi. I hope you're all well. Hope you're good. Um, uh, my talk today. Probably will be called receiving the word for one of a better title, and um, I'll get you to get your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter eight. That's that's all right. It's okay. It's good enough. Um, so I'm just going to start reading. Um, if you're spirit filled, I don't know who's here. I'm going to have a quick look actually. Excuse me again, I might as well. There's a, there's a thing near me. G'day everybody. G'day people from Adelaide. Alright, that's, that's enough. That's got me. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Alright. Alright. So we're going to start in Luke chapter um, chapter 8, verse 5. And this is a, obviously the parable of the sower and the seed. Um... A soul went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it withered away, uh, because it lacked moisture, and some fell among thorns, thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked it, other fell on good ground, and it sprung up, and bare fruit, uh, uh, Sixty, a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And we read further down, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So that's, that's the big one. Those by the wayside are they that hear and cometh the devil and taketh it away, the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Uh, they that are on the rock are they which when they hear they receive the word with joy and they have no root. They have, these have no root. And for a while they believe and in a time of temptation, fall away. 
Those that fell among the thorns are they which, when they have heard, they go forth, <coughs> excuse me, and are choked, a bit like that, um, <laughs> with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. Uh, but on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. And um, most of us here are spirit-filled. There'll be, there will be new people watching this, I have no doubt. Um, new, new people that are just spirit-filled. Um, most of us have heard that, that parable. Uh, any, anyone that's religious, is, or even not religious, has probably heard that parable a thousand times. That story, um, and it's and it's about the effect um, that the word of God has on people, and uh, and on their hearts, and uh, you know, obviously, um, stony heart, no depth, no penetration of the seed. You know, the the thorns, the thistles. Um, you've put the word of God. And it's competing amongst all these other things in a person's life and, and they don't have time for it. Um, good ground is, is the humble good heart and, and, uh, and the word of God can actually do something in that, in that area, in that ground. Um, Colin rang me the other day and I've got the okay from Colin to tell this little story. It's okay. He told me I have to pay him royalties. Um, <laughs> So I think he was going to use it in his next talk, but I beat him to it. Um, so Colin rang me up and I was in the midst of um, flooring paradise, um, laying carpet, which is good fun. Um, anyway, Colin rang me up and he said, Pete, I woke up this morning. I woke up with a thought this morning. Oh, good on you, Colin. That's, that's, that's always good, you know. <laughs> woke up with a thought. That's... It's a start. You know. <laughs> yeah, we're joking, but um, and his thought was that we have the same power, the same spirit that Jesus Christ has. Therefore, we can do what he did. And I'm like, yep. So you're in the midst of I'm in carpet land, um, floor layers paradise, and and. So I'm like, yep, yep, okay, yep. No, that's that's true. That is the truth, you know. Like, yeah, good on you, Colin. That's a, like, what a great thought to have. The difference between Colin waking up with this thought and me hearing this thought while I'm busy doing something else. Colin's had this revelation from God. He's he's woken up and bang. You know what? I've got the same spirit as Jesus Christ. You know, it's um, I've I've put this on the iPad and it's really small, so I'm having trouble reading it. That's all right. It's always something. So he's had this revelation. Bang. Smacked him in the head. You know. I can do what, what Jesus did because his spirit's in me. And, and we read the, the scripture. Um, now, it's, now it's, I've lost it because I haven't written it down. But um, we have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And, and it dwells in us. Um, it should quicken your mortal bodies. Um, it's mostly like that. So Colin's had this thought, and it's actually, it's a day changer, this thought in Colin's head. And, and for me, I'm just, I'm knocking smooth edge down. You know, like, <laughs> it's like, it's not an inconvenience, because it's, it's truth and it's good, but it doesn't have the same penetration. It doesn't, it didn't change my day. I thought about it later, and it was really, a really good little thought. Um, and, and so going back to that parable, um, we know this parable is about, the word of God implanted in someone, given to someone, and and the effect that it has. But also, it's it's good for us to look at it as spirit-filled Christians. That we want to be always prepared for the word of God. We always want to be ready. Um, in Jeremiah four verse three, um, uh, it says, "Don't go there." Um, for thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem: Break up your fallow ground. And do not sow among thorns. And um, sometimes, well, every day, you know, there should be a bit of prior preparation, um, a bit of tilling of the ground, um, getting our hearts right before the Lord. 
And um, so we can take the good things that he's got for us. So we can actually receive it. Um, you know? Um, I was even thinking, because of this whole corona thing, not today, obviously, because I'm here, but there's been a couple of times when um, it's like Sunday meeting. Oh, what? Watch. The meeting's on. Well, well, kids, get your stuff for the meeting. Go sit down. You know, like, not a lot of prior preparation to, to hear the word of God faithfully preached, you know. Um, that's, that's happened a couple of times. It's not a habit, habit we want to start developing. Even, even in this time, um, I'll just speak from my experience. Um, if you're new here today, I'm going to read some scriptures about salvation. And um, with this in mind, this is the word of God and you're going to hear it and uh, you can receive it. And it can actually be great things in your life and, um, if you want that, you know. You're obviously listening, so um, I guess you can switch it off. But <laughs> you, you're here, you, you, want to, you want to learn, you know, you want to learn of God. So we'll go to John 3, verse 3. Gospel of John. Does anyone know what time it started? Alright. Um, John 3, verse 3, and we're going to read it to verse 8. Uh, Jesus, Jesus is talking to a religious man, and... Um, He's telling the religious man how you get saved. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot sing the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. And he says something else. The wind blows where it listeth, <coughs> and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. And um, there's a need to be born of the, the water and the spirit. And, and we'll read in, in more verses and we'll come to the conclusion that, that being born of the water is being baptised or buried, burying your old way of life. And uh, being born of the spirit is receiving the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And when you get this happen to you, there's an evidence. And that evidence is that you'll, be, you'll speak in other tongues. There's a whole lot of other good stuff that happens with that, but that's the first one. And you need those things to actually, to even see the kingdom of heaven, it's saying. So we might go, go to Mark 16, just quickly. I'm just going to quote John 4, 24. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For, uh, for God, it says, it says he seeks, he seeks, um, you to worship him in that way. That's what he's after. Um, so Mark 16, verse 15, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples. And this is just before he disappeared. Um, he went, went into heaven upstairs. Um, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptised shall be saved. So there you go. There's, again, you, to, to see the kingdom of heaven, to be saved, you need to believe. You need to be baptised. He that believeth not shall be damned. So there's the, uh, that's the flip side. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And um, here we read of God backing up his believers with signs following. Um, we're just going to quickly 
Uh, go through a couple more. Acts chapter 1. Um, verse 8 but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come unto you and you will be witnesses both, un uh, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth and um, this is Jesus again talking to his disciples that something was actually going to happen to them that there was going to be a power there was going to be um, authority given to them from God. Um, Acts chapter 1 verse 4, just while we're, while we're knocking through them all. Um, I didn't actually write it down. Yeah, yeah I, I should probably know it off by heart, but Mac is throwing me a bone. Um, <laughs> And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clovered tongues as of a fire. It sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And um, I received the Holy Spirit when I was 10 years old. And... I know that I received the Holy Spirit because I had this experience that happened to the, the disciples. There was 120 of these people and when they received the Holy Spirit they spoke in tongues. I've been in a little mud brick, well, it wasn't even mud brick, it was sticks, this hut, right, in Africa, in Kenya, in Kisi, in the highlands, and there was this stick hut and uh, it was a real hot day and there was, they had gauv roof. Not much insulation in that puppy. Um, and the walls were made out of cow dung and mud. That's what they used. So it was getting pretty thick, the air. And there was about 30 people in this, this room. 30 people got baptised. 29 of them received the Holy Spirit that day within a couple of hours. And you know, you know how I know? Even though they were praying in a different language, I could see the change in, when they spoke in tongues. And... Um, there was only one guy that didn't, and um, he was like an Anglican or something. And, um, and they were calling him, his name was Thomas, they were calling him Doubting Thomas. <laughs> so, it happened to me when I was uh, 10 years old. This, this life-changing experience that can happen to you. Um, so, that happened to the 120 of them on the day of, the day of Pentecost. And there's all these people listening. They, there was a bit of commotion. They ended up asking uh, Peter and the apostles what's going on. Um, Peter, Peter talks to them about Jesus, how he died on the cross, how he actually took their sins. And, um, and he, he um, took their sins on the cross and he died for, people's, for, for everyone's sins. And um, verse 37 um, and when they heard these words, this is the people that he's talking to, <clears throat> they were pricked in their heart and said, Peter, unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is to you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as our Lord, our God shall call. Thanks, man. Okay. Um, so there's actually we've read a few scriptures and they're all tying in together that there's a there's a way to go to heaven and there's a, there's a way to do it and um, and that is to be repent so you, you turn you, you're turning your life around you're saying God I want to do it your way no longer my way you get baptised so that's a burial of your old way of life. You're saying, God, I'm putting it down. I don't want to pick it back up. You've got to give me a good life. You've got to change my life. You've got to give me this spirit. And, um, and when he does, you're going to speak in tongues. And there's, he's going to, you're going to know God's real. 
is actually going to, we're talking about a clean slate. Um, and this promise is for you and your children, it's, it's for your household, it's, it's for your people around about you uh, to experience. Um, I'll just go quickly to Romans 6. Um, well, just, just read it in verse 5. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. And it says something like, then, then shall we be in when Christ is our life. What does it say again? I've actually not written it down again. I'm bad. <laughs> yeah. Then we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> so, I'm sorry about that. I thought I was all good. I thought that if I used an iPad, I'd be all good. <laughs> but I still, these are my normal notes, you know, like, usually I have to go, like, up and down and about. <laughs> anyway, so Jesus Christ, he came on this earth, he died in sin, and he rose again. And, um, much like with us, if we want to start again, if we want the clean slate that the Lord offers us, we've got to die to our old way of life, we've got to bury it, and God gives us a new life. And when he gives us his Holy Spirit, he, he fills us with his spirit. And, um, and in Genesis 1.11, I don't go there, but this is, the, this is the creation and God's putting things in place. And he says... Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed is of itself unto the earth, and it was so. And um, spiritual things echo natural things, and vice versa, because the same creator made them all. Get away. Um, so, if you plant... I don't know, uh, we'll say a mustard tree, because we're going to read about that later, a mustard seed, you'll get a mustard tree. So if you do it this way, the way Jesus has done it, where you bury your old way of life in baptism, you die to your old way of life, you bury it, and you receive the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus did, you're doing what Jesus wanted you to do. Um... I learned a couple of things about seeds. I probably knew them before, but it's been a while since school. The internet must be true. It tells you many things. <laughs> um, you know, the plant seed, it's, um, it's got a seed coat, a shell. It's got the embryo, embryo, and that's um, it's like the microscopic little plant almost already ready to go. It's got a, a section of it will become roots and a section of it will become the plant. And it's got the endosperm, or it's got stored food and nutrients. Nutrients, and um, it has everything it needs when it's placed in the right environment to grow into a plant. It's been, it is, by all accounts, a little plant. And so when Colin said this little truth on the phone the other day. Um, well, how true is it? I'm trying to find his little... What he said. Um, he said, We have the same power, the same spirit that Jesus Christ has. We can do what he did. And when he filled us with this Holy Spirit, that's a little bit of Jesus Christ in us. That's a little bit of the spirit. It's the whole spirit. But it's... It's got potential to grow, is what I'm trying to say. And it's got a potential to not stop growing if we don't stop it. <laughs> if we don't quench the spirit. Um, in the right environment, it'll keep growing, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. And uh, we're going to read in Mark chapter 4, verse 31. 
while you're turning with it. Mark chapter 4, verse 31. Alright, I'm finally there. Verse 30 we'll start in. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is grown in the earth is less than all the seeds of the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, it becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches so that fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And um, so where I'm going with this is this kingdom of heaven, or I'm talking about the Holy Spirit in the individual, it'll keep growing um, and it will be a refuge and a shelter it talks about the birds of the air. You think of a big, big tree with shade, uh, windbreak. Uh, all the farms around here, are Monterey cypress, big, wide, stops the wind. We had a bit of wind here recently, and it was pulling out trees and all sorts of things. Um, but that's the idea of a, of a windbreak for, for protection. Um, Someone that's strong in the Lord, who's using the Holy Spirit, it talks about the cedars of Lebanon, that they'll grow. Um, we might go there actually. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. We'll go there. I'm better now. I don't know why. I copy and pasted all everything here, but not on the last page. Psalms 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and he shall be like a tree by the, waters, uh, by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It says the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff that the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly perish. So we want to be... There's a, there's a bit of a list there. We don't want to be scornful. We don't want to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We don't want to be... We don't want to be looking around um, necessary to others or um, or opinions of the world for our counsel. We actually want to be drawing back to God, drawing back to the Bible. Maybe maybe actually listening or, or asking questions um, with with someone that you can see is is walking right with God. To actually get their advice on something that's that's pretty probably pretty good to do. Um, if you're being scornful, you're probably, you're sitting, <laughs> you're not doing much, you've got idle hands, idle minds, you're, you're too busy looking about at other people maybe, and you're, you're not really doing the work yourself. Um, the rivers of living water, obviously using the Holy Spirit to, to, to help us gain our potential. The mustard seed back in the in the last parable that it was a parable of Jesus, it grew as wide as it did high. They're, I thought they were going to be like huge trees, but it's like a twenty foot tree. 
I thought, oh, that's not that big, you know, but for around the area, it's a sizable tree. It's, it's everywhere, that tree. That's why Jesus said, oh, this tree here, you know. Um, it's, 20, it's 20 foot high, but it becomes tw about 20 foot wide. And, and an interesting thing I learned about trees, <laughs> trees will just keep growing. They don't stop growing unless, obviously, they die. There's, there's uh, some kind of disease. Um, someone hacks it with a chainsaw, that'll <laughs> slow it down. Um, but that'll it'll still keep growing. If it's healthier in, in the roots, it'll, it'll grow again. And um, I wasn't going to say, say that, but sometimes in life you might feel you've been chopped at the stump. You've been, you've been stumped, I don't know. Um, life has dealt you a hard blow. Well, if you just keep doing the right things, if you keep serving the Lord, you keep getting your, your um, you keep praying, you keep reading, you keep serving the Lord, well, you're going to keep growing. It doesn't matter what comes across you, you in your life, whatever can come across you, you actually just keep growing. So a tree will just keep growing. It might reach its height, it might reach a certain height, and, and they reckon possibly that's because um, water, water, um, can't get up to the leaves or something for there's a there's a limit for the cells to draw the water up so so certain species have different heights obviously but one thing that they won't stop doing is they won't stop growing and they the the rings will keep forming the rings in the tree and they'll get stronger and stronger and bigger and bigger and they're putting on mass they're like uh, bodybuilders that's what <laughs> that's what the article I read said they're they're bodybuilders and um, Jesus said about John the Baptist, he said, what went you out to see, a, a reed shaking in the wind? And, uh, and he goes, no, I think I've read it, yeah. Yea, a prophet, um, but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Um, John wasn't someone who was pushed around. Um, in Ephesians 4, it talks about... Um, we might go there. Ephesians 4 verse 14. So spirit-filled people were growing up in his ways. We're learning of him. We're becoming stronger. We're no longer babes in Christ, but we want to be strong. And uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. That says... We'll read, you know what, no, we'll read, we'll read from verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ that we therefore be no more children tossed to and fro <clears throat> tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive but speaking in the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ and um, so God's this amazing thing, this amazing setup for us, the church, where we're to assemble together, news team assemble, um, we're to <laughs> gather together, um, and there's there's different roles in the church, and there's different people that bring different things to the table to edify the church, um, so that as we're all learning and we're all growing together. Um, that no one's getting tossed around to and through with wind of doctrine. There's there's nothing unsettling us that we can actually go to someone or, or in a meeting the Lord gives us um, something in the gifts. He actually he's providing everything for us that we might be grow and be strong, and um, and that we don't get rocked by things that don't need to rock us in our life. That we can actually overcome these things or or them not even bother us where they once might have. Um, so I guess I'll just close off 
Um, if, if you haven't had this experience with God, this Holy Spirit experience, um, this fresh start, um, well, we're, we're, re we're really encouraging you um, to, to give it a go because um, the proof's in the pudding. Um, there's nothing better that you can do with your life and, um, and we want to share that with you. I mean, that's what Jesus wants to give you. Um, for the rest of us who are spirit-filled, we want to keep growing and we, want to, we don't want to do things that um, is going to inhibit our growth in the Lord. Um, we recently got Netflix. Sometimes watching zombie movies is just isn't going to help you walk in the Lord. <laughs> Um, in fact, all the time, probably, you know, like, um, there's things, there's things that are just not going to help, you know, there's things that are, might even stunt your growth, there's things that will, will stop a tree, a disease, fungus, bacteria. Um, it talks about a root of bitterness, um, we don't, we don't want to harbour a root of bitterness, we don't, we don't, we don't, um, if someone's done something wrong by us, Maybe we just got to pray about us, um, because down at Queenscliff Avenue of Honour, we've got these beautiful trees, beautiful Montreal cypress. Been there, I don't know, since World War One, after World War One, and uh, they're going to lock them all down because they've got a disease, and it's spreading um, from tree to tree. So. They're systematically, slowly, slowly going to cut all those those trees down. And if you've got a root of bitterness in you, it's actually going to affect other people around you. It will affect the church. So um, if you have a problem with a brother, you've got to go talk to him yourself. So it's just you and him. There's there's a protocol for that. If it was a, if you're offended at someone or someone something that someone said, if something I've said has offended you, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> We, we just got to keep growing together, and I'm just going to leave there. Amen. 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 Thank you, Peter. Excellent, uh, excellent talk. Um, as Peter was saying, the salvation message is very, very simple. And um, I was quoting from Mark 16, and that very last verse there says, And they, the disciples, went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. And confirming the word was signed following. And uh, if you're new to our meetings, you might be thinking there's thousands and thousands of different churches. They all say that they're the same. Well, really, there's only two main groups. There's this spirit-filled Bible-believing church, and there's man-made religion. And the difference is with the spirit-filled Bible-believing church is God works with this church and confirms their word was signed following. In other words, um, if you're sick, we can pray for you, we can encourage you to be healed, and God will confirm our word with miraculous sign following of healing. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we can't give you the Holy Spirit, but we can encourage you and pray for you, and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, you'll speak in tongues, and God will confirm our word with sign following. And with man-made religion, there's none of that. There's no confirmation by God of what they are saying their word is not confirmed. So very, very simple. If you feel the Holy Spirit, you will know you're speaking tongues and you can be, you can be baptized. We're going to turn to our communion service now. And as we're getting ready for this, I just want to quote a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. It says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the free unmerited favour of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So Jesus, the Son of God, uh, the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the end, you know, he had it pretty good in the heavenly realm, one with God. He was rich, but um, mankind needed the Saviour. God had a plan at the seed of the woman would uh, have his heel bruised, but he would crush the serpent's head. And so Jesus became poor. It says that he humbled himself in the form of a man, 
and he was made lower than the angels. He became a human being and then he went to the cross and he really became poor, became a poor, wretched soul, the sin of mankind placed upon him. That um, through that poverty, we might be rich. So we were the poor ones. We were the ones that were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers in the covenants of promise. We had no hope without God in this world. We were poor, wretched people through Jesus Christ, through what he did. We might be rich. doesn't mean that our bank account's going to increase. It's not the riches of this world, contrary to the prosperity doctrine. The true riches of God, it says in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, for whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. The riches of God is Christ in us, and that's the hope of glory. It says in Romans that uh, those that were pre, those that were foreknown, predestinated, those were predestinated, were called, those were called, were justified, and those are justified were glorified. So that's our hope that one day Jesus Christ returns and will be glorified, will enter into the glory of God. And that's our hope. And that's Jesus Christ in us that gives us that hope. And that's our riches. It's all done for Jesus Christ was rich that he became poor and through his poverty that we might be rich. So we're going to um have the communion elements now. We'll ask um, Daryl if he could bless the bread for us, please. And afterwards, if we could ask uh, Peter, it's Peter and Zeta, Peter, if they could bless the cup. So we'll just um, ask Daryl now. Is it ready? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you today, Lord, that uh, as we gather around this uh, memorial service of what you've done for us. Lord, that uh, your hand will be upon us, Lord. Your spirit will be here, Lord. And uh, Lord, we will just appreciate, even at this time, Lord, what you did for us. Lord, that your body was broken, that uh, we might be healed, that we might uh, receive all those uh, promises that you uh, have in your word. Lord, bless us now. Watch over this uh, communion service in your mighty name. Amen. And we read in Corinthians, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And we had given it thanks. He broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread now. Dear Lord, uh, we just take this uh, cup now in remembrance of your spilt blood, um, that you uh, shed it freely, uh, losing your life uh, eventually, Lord, um, not uh, not for any gain to yourself, obviously, but um, for the for the ones that would come after, for the ones uh, that uh, would uh, could eventually be called uh, sons and daughters, Lord, those that. Uh, have a compassion towards God, and um, that we might uh, might all receive this wonderful gift, and might have that opportunity to be part of Your kingdom, Lord. Uh, we uh, we cannot thank You enough for this uh, sacrifice You made for us, Lord. But uh, we will uh, we will uh, still do our best, Lord. And we thank You now. And after the same manner, also He took the cup, and He had supped, saying, "This cup is the new testament in My blood." Do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink it. Amen. And now we're going to enter into the spiritual gifts of the Holy Ghost, the voice gifts, as mentioned in Corinthians. 
And as we were saying before about God confirming our word with signs following, this is another way that God confirms their word with miraculous signs following voice gifts of the Holy Ghost, where there's two or three big prophecies, sorry, sorry, two or three gifts of tongues, two or three uh, corresponding interpretations, and then two or three prophecies. So we will enter into this time now. And of course, we encourage everyone, Adelaide, part of the fellowship, to be used. Um, you just have to make sure that you unmute your mic beforehand. So let's uh, seek the Lord now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Yea, didn't I come with a message of reconciliation? Yea, that you could be brought back to be with me and to be with my Father, that you'd be joint heirs with me, yea, and uh, partake of all the blessings, yea, that I have promised you. Yea, rejoice in this, my people, this day, that you have been reconciled with my Father, you have been brought back to your rightful place. Yea, be joyful, yea, and sing praises to me, yea, and watch over, and I will watch over you in every step you take in this life says the Lord. It's not my word declare it, that uh, with man things are impossible, but with me, saith the Lord, all things are possible. Therefore I say unto you and encourage you this day not to look at things through the natural eyes, the natural understanding, saith the Lord, for all things will be impossible. But rather look uh, look at the uh, look at life, look at the things that you're going through, saith the Lord, uh, with the Spirit, uh, walking in faith, knowing that I can do all things. That uh, nothing is ever too lost, uh, nothing is ever too far gone, saith the Lord, because I uh, I work in the impossible. So I encourage you this day not to not to look at things through the natural eyes, uh, but rather walk in that faith, that uh, that spirit that I've given you. For in this uh, you will uh, overcome every challenge that is set before you, saith the Lord. So just remember this: know that all things are possible with me, and to look at me all at always, saith the Lord. Gift of prophecy. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
You live in uh, challenging times, says the Lord your God. And uh, you think about uh, there, there are people out there who are very uh, courageous in these times. And uh, even when you think about uh, uh, in the history of, of mankind, uh, there, are, there are those who people look to as, as great examples who, uh, who have shown tremendous courage or, or uh, um, sacrifice who have been loving, who have been, who've been kind who, uh, to their, their fellow human uh, race, uh, says the Lord your God. And uh, uh, many people would um, uh, uh, love to reflect on these stories or, uh, or even to take example or to, uh, or to take quotes uh, from, from these people and their thinking and what they've said. And I, I ask you, uh, who... Is your example, says the Lord your God? Who uh, is your hero that, uh, that you would follow in their steps, says the Lord? As I've made you mine and uh, you are able to, uh, to reflect on uh, what Jesus Christ has done for you and uh, what uh, we, we carried out uh, together there, says the Lord, that, uh, that you would dwell upon these things, that you would... Uh, uh, take these things into your heart and into your mind, that, uh, that this would be your example in life, that uh, even as, uh, as Jesus Christ uh, uh, died for you, would you consider uh, how many people have had uh, somebody die, f die for them and, and uh, to know that he, he did it for you, but, uh, but uh, also that he, he walked uh, uh, perfectly that, uh, and, and he was an example that you should... Uh, Follow in his steps that you should hear his sayings, says the Lord your God. I say to you to, uh, to walk in this, in this way. Consider these things. Take these things into your heart, says the Lord your God, as you, as you live your life, as you, you aspire to what I have already given you, but that you would walk in this, uh, in this righteousness, uh, says the Lord your God. Uh, that uh, has been graciously given unto you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, my people can too walk. Um, the typical walk, if they're not being agreements. Two people cannot walk unless they agree, so the Lord. And you have no fellowship with the things of this world. If you have my spirit within you, and my spirit within you doesn't agree, yea, with the spirit of this world, that is contrary to it. I was saying to you, love not the world and the things in it, so the Lord. They but love me, love the kingdom, love the spirit of things, so the Lord. Yeah, you're in this world, but you're not part of this world. You do not walk with this world, so the Lord. But you cannot agree. They walk with me, they fellowship with me. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. We'll um, hold the gifts there. And we'll have a good time of prayer now. We're doing the spiritual things. Like the Bible says, go into your closet and pray. Well, this uh, coronavirus is good for going into our. Into our private places and having some prayer so we'll um, have some uh, good fervent prayer in the spirit and then we'll um, unmute us all um, so let's uh, seek the Lord now hallelujah thank you Jesus
Amen. Excellent. Now, uh, I'm not sure about announcements, but what we're going to do is hand back over to Pastor Scott, and he will get us in some more choruses. Good to end, and uh, we've got the band over there, so it's good to uh, have a few good more choruses to finish the meeting. And if there's any announcements, Pastor Scott, uh, I'll be able to give them. And we'll ask Pastor Scott to close in prayer as well. Why not? So we'll hand over to the no Pastor Scott. Okay, hello. Um, you want a faster or a slow one? We'll, we'll start with a slow one. Two, two, six, nine, but as truly as I do. <laughs> Well, you know, I've worked out from Dan that when you're doing this, you'd answer your own questions. Pages ready. Rejoice and sing. Uh, but if you're playing along at home, we're going to play this in F. Sorry, so that we can lead into We Are Heirs of the Father 226. I can't see you all today. But, uh,
um, Anthony or Dan, um, and then you can tell us whether you want another, well maybe we'll do another chorus, there I am answering my own questions again, <laughs> we'll do another chorus and then close in prayer, if that's alright. Mm. Um, I got nothing. Anthony? <laughs> I've got something. Okay, Brad. Said, said some uh, like prayer requests. So whoever's closing in prayer, if you could um, have prayer for Steen's sister Caroline and prayer for Susie's husband's uncle who's just been diagnosed Progressive uh, prostate cancer. So again, we believe in miracles. So, um, so hand it to Scott and whoever is in prayer, if I could uh, have those prayer requests in mind. Yep. Uh, okay, Thanks. so we, we're done for announcements then. Um, we don't need uh, house meeting venues yet. Although, I think there was some um, uh, state. Um, announcements today, but we won't, I won't tell you anything because I don't know them exactly, but I, I think things might be easing up a bit soon, so stay tuned for that. We'll um, do what we can, we can, but uh, I can see uh, there's already people um, just uh, fellowshipping together, which is good, um, and uh, having communion together today, so uh, now what were we going to sing? Let, let the, what's, uh, is that 180? Yes, Therefore the redeemed. Therefore the redeemed. Or let the redeemed. Or less the redeemed. Therefore the Let's do 180. <laughs> You've saved us, uh, but Lord, you, you keep us. And uh, even as we've we've heard it today, that uh, Lord, as we um, are planted in you, that we uh, we will continue to, to grow, uh, Lord, stronger and stronger. And uh, whatever winds, uh, Lord, uh, come against us, uh, Lord, that we're able to 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 keep growing in you because uh, we're rooted and grounded in you, Lord God. And uh, Lord, we just uh, really thank you. Uh, for, for all the saints, uh, Lord, uh, just able to keep rejoicing and uh, uh, as we've even uh, shared 
uh, across the globe uh, there last night, Lord, in, in testimony and just praising you, uh, just uh, in, in, in song and, and in sharing uh, our stories of the wonderful things you've done for us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just pray that, that your word uh, continues to, to go out, uh, Lord, uh, uh, just uh, amongst those, uh, Lord, who just really need you, Lord, uh, just, uh, Lord, that they would... Uh, uh, that you would hear their cry, Lord God, and uh, Lord, just uh, in, their, in their searching, and, and Lord, just that they would uh, come to know you as we have. Lord, we just uh, really uh, pray that you bless everybody. Lord, these prayer requests have uh, been put to you here, Lord. Uh, Lord, sometimes these things uh, seem so so big to us, uh, Lord, but we know that, uh, Lord, you love to, to operate in the impossible, Lord, and uh, Lord, just to... Uh, uh, even uh, to, to blow our minds, Lord, uh, as it were, Lord, just that uh, uh, we know that these things, uh, these wonderful gifts come from above, Lord. We just uh, thank you, Lord, and uh, just thank you for your blessings. Hallelujah. Bless Bless the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Back to Brad or Kazoo Man. <laughs> yeah, the kazoo. You needed a kazoo there today, guys. This thing's amazing. All right. Um, breakout groups, is that why you've come back to me? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, Anthony did say, Anthony, is this this weekend? Is that what you're talking about? This Saturday? Just give me a thumbs up. Uh, no. No, 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 no. You talky then. No, me not talky, you talky. No, you're on then. You got it later. When is it though? I don't even know when it is. So not, not this Saturday. We're, we're going to have a break. But the following Saturday, we're going to try and organise an activity with Bendigo. So that would be the 7th of uh, June? Something like that, I think. Thereabouts, yeah. If, yeah. So if you didn't hear that from Anthony, he was going into cyberspace there too. Um, we're going to try and join a zoom meeting with bendigo to uh to catch up with those saints which would be good because last night was okay. awesome we had a good time um going to london so let's do these breakout rooms all right <laughs> What do we got here? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know what you want to do, but there's a few visitors on it, it sounds like. I don't know whether. Should we take this off? Or do we break it up into different devices? Or is that only too late for that? I can put it on the TV. <laughs> okay, we'll come, come out. Okay, see everybody. Have a nice, safe journey.
Giselle. Did you know G Giselle was three on Thursday? What's going on, sir?